I knew that it was only a matter of time. It was not if, it was when. Because I knew it wasn't gonna turn around. The spirit and the boys was being ed and everything else. You just knew that things were gonna be, and I was gonna be a victim of, uh, of Van Oydel, really. Because, you know, for me, he disrespected Nottingham Forest. Uh, he, what he did was disgraceful. Here's Bob Williams. And he's through here! And in the end, Forrest will say it doesn't matter how you played as long as you win it. And has Bob Williams' goal done the trick? And Nottingham Forest are promoted, barring a Herculean goal-scoring effort from Middlesbrough this week. Dave Bassett will be leading his side in the Premiership next season. through a, a friend of mine who, who knew Irving Scholar uh, very well, uh, that uh, he, when he was involved in the takeover of uh, Forrest and um, with uh, Nigel Ray and Laszlo and everything else, uh, you know, he phoned me up and said, look, I'm, we're taking over Forrest. Um, we've got Stuart Pearce as player manager at the moment and everything else, but we feel we need somebody with more experience who's been around. You've got promotions in this league. You've got a record of it, etc." Uh, we'd like to be interested in bringing you to the club. And uh, I inquired whether it's manager. And he said, well, no, not, we can't bring you in at manager at the moment, he said, because Stuart isn't in that capacity until the end of the season. And we don't know what's going to happen at the end of the season, whether we get relegated or promoted. It depends on that situation. Um, but we'd like to come as, as, as general manager, basically, and help them out, you know, wherever necessary, get to know the club. And uh, at the same time, in the summer, you will be the manager. And I said, what happens if Stuart Pearce wants to carry on playing and be the player manager? He said, well, we won't have that. We want a proper manager. We've got to get promotion if we get relegated. We've got to consolidate our position, he said. Um, so basically, you will be the manager in the summer, but you come in at the moment and Stuart will be responsible for picking the team. You, you're there to help him in any shape or form. Get to know the club. You mentioned the, the takeover and the fact that you knew one of the members of the, of the consortium that took over the club. Um, I've seen it read that it was about 132 years of gentle change up until that point. It felt like a fresh new start for the club, a new attitude. Is that the impression that you got? Yeah, that was exactly it. That's how it was sold to me, uh, that this is going to be the way forward. Forrest have got to move into the modern era in terms of what they're doing. That wasn't being disrespectful to the past. And this was the new way forward. And, you know, with Nigel Ray and the people there, they were big hitters. You know, they were wealthy people. And I thought, well, you know, they really mean business. You know, they, they don't only mean getting it back into the Premier League, but they want to be up the top. They want to be challenging to get into Europe, you know, not just consolidate the situation. All right, it might have been consolidation for a year or two to get it but then it was really looking at the players that, uh, uh, that you could get that were going to take you into that echelon where you could challenge for the championship again. Irving rung me at the club and said look you know you're the manager now you're officially the manager and you know we need you to get cracking uh, with getting a team ready because we want to you know be getting out of this league as quickly as possible and uh, we want you to work out who you want to keep who you don't want to keep etc uh, at that particular time but Irving also was a bit inclined to be one of the, the technical directors I quite liked him but uh, Irving thought he was a football expert as well and uh, you know it was it was a, a little bit difficult in that summer because for one player he wanted to get rid of was Kevin Campbell he'd got it in his mind that Kevin wasn't the player for Forrest etc now I was well aware that Kevin was Kevin had hardly played in any of the games he'd been injured and etc and there was issues there that I couldn't quite understand um, you know a bit like Sturridge was always injured Kevin and I remember him from the Arsenal days and everything else and um, anyway I was completely against that to, um, but Irving had this influence where he was in with agents, he was very much in with Rob Jansen, Van Hoydonk's agent, and one or two French agents, and uh, Irving had an opinion, so I had to be strong in terms of what I particularly wanted. I worked with Stuart going, we needed a left back, and I'd watched Alan Rogers, I knew he was quick, he had potential, a, a young player there. Uh, I wanted Jeff Thomas, who I knew was a good character, a good character, a real strong individual to, to, to bring into the team. I mean, we'd had, 
uh, um, a nucleus at that particular time. We brought Pascalo, the uh, Swiss goalkeeper, in, um, who had come on good recommendation. Mick Kelly, who was my goalkeeping coach, had worked with him and recommended him. And uh, so we brought him in because Mark Crossley, with his back, was a little bit indifferent. But of course, it didn't work out with Mark as well as we expected. But luckily, I got Besant later on in the season uh, from Southampton. Again, we brought in one or two, Thierry Bonalea came in from France to, to give us a bit of experience and uh, uh, do a decent job. We, we, we brought John Helder in from Norway because I'd done my work over there um, and we knew he was a good player and come through. So John brought, came in to supplement Cooper and uh, Chettle at that particular time. We had Gemmel, uh, we had uh, Bart Williams was ready there, Stoney was there, Kevin and uh, 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 Pierre was up front. We had Ian Moore, uh, centre forward, who was quick, uh, who wasn't the best success, but you know we needed cover to to come in at particular times. And uh, we, we, as I say, Wony was there, so the nucleus of the side was was good to be, get moving. So I felt fairly confident that if we performed at the level we should have done, and we could create the right spirit and make sure that uh, there was no hangover, that we were ready to go and fire on all cylinders which was important. So we went away pre-season to Finland and it was a good bonding job with the players there to make sure and to get over the message that this is we want. We want promotion. We want the championship. This is what we're going for. We've got the ability. Now have we got the attitude and determination to, to do it? And uh, as I say, we got off to a terrific start. He really hasn't flourished at all tonight and it's Forrest on the attack once more with Campbell. Dutchman strikes, yes it's there! 53rd minute of the game and Van Hoyland makes it 2-1. Stone again, Gemmel, Van Hoyland, good control of the Nottingham Forest again. Look at the overlap coming there. Des Little gets it, squares it across. Oh, confusion again, Campbell's there. 2-0. Kevin Campbell made up his mind immediately. While the defenders stood and waited. Oh, just sliding that ball beautifully to uh, Van Hoydonk. And there's the evidence. Uh, squares it across, headed away by Gray. Van Hoydonk again tries the shot. A blistering shot. Oh, what a goal! 36 minutes on the clock. A thunderous shot from the Dutchman. Here comes the Dutchman. And this time he's got it! Previous attempt to a foil, but that one was bent in beautifully. And Van Hoydon puts Forrest in the lead in the top of the table clash. You know, Pierre was one of these people who, who moaned about training. You know, either the grass was too long or the grass was too short, the, the pitch was too hard, uh, the, you know, the balls were too hard and uh, we trained too long, we didn't train enough. He was one of those that you knew could wear yourself out and uh, uh, we, we had to deal with that and, uh, and deal with him, in, as I say, as an individual because that was the way he was. But when he came to the Saturday, you know, he did produce for us. Um, uh, I mean, he got most of the accolades uh, when really Kevin Campbell deserved them. But Pierre scored more goals than Kevin Campbell, but if you look at them, we, which we did, uh, Pierre had a lot of penalties in those, a lot of free kicks outside the box, and he was top-notch. I'd say he's as good as Beckham, if not better. Pierre was fantastic. He spent a lot of time practising, which was quite useful really, because when he was being a bit of a nuisance, I'd get Mickey Adams to say, take Pierre off and tell him about the wonderful goals you score from Coventry and tell him you're going to have a practice with him. So they used to go over there, get all the mannequins out and Mick was telling him all this and Pierre didn't know who Coventry was and who he was talking about and everything else. But they were practising so it got Pierre out of the way and he didn't interfere with the other work that we wanted to do. But I've got to say, out of those goals, when you really analysed it, Kevin scored 23 goals, no penalties, no free kicks. Pierre, if you look to, he, 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 I think he managed about 16 or 17 in open play. Uh, all the rest were like penalties and, and free kicks. But, you know, uh, when I say, you know, the goal he scored against Port Vale, how he bent that round the, 
the wall was was unbelievable. That was there was nothing there, you know, that position of the highest order, uh, as such. So, um, it, but we, we 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 you know we kept the lid on it, but it was always going to be difficult in the future with Pierre. Here's Bart Williams, and he's through here! And in the end, Forrest will say it doesn't matter how you played as long as you win it. And has Bart Williams' goal done the trick? Dave Bassett was out to celebrate. The Forest fans who've had a really anxious afternoon against the bottom club, their mood suddenly changes. Bart Williams stuck up front because of Campbell's injury, and now can the dancing and the promotion party begin? Well, it's tough on Reading. I said earlier, this fella had an abundance of skill. This time, just bombs. The first touch is superb. It's a great turn, and he whacks his left foot shot past the goalkeeper, Howie. The first touch is brilliant. Under control, beautiful spin, lovely ability and balance, and a great finish. And goodness me, Forrest, not a sparkling performance, but what a cracking goal. And Dave Bassett knows it. This stage of the season, it's all about results. And surely that's a winning goal. And Nottingham Forest are promoted, barring a Herculean goal-scoring effort from Middlesbrough this week. Dave Bassett will be leading his side in the Premiership next season. The disappointment for Tommy Burns, who came in too late to save Reading, and they have been relegated. Early on, um, I sensed that uh, things weren't quite right. And Irving was a, a scholar pulled me and said, we need to raise two and a half million pound. And I thought, well, hold on a minute. I thought we was gonna have eight million pound to spend. Now you want two and a half million. Um, I forget what the reason was and bits and pieces. Anyway, so I thought, well, hold on. We've got to be able to cope with this uh, in, in terms of what we're doing and how we do it. Um, and at the end of that season, I, I spent that, the summer talking to Scott Gamble and Kevin Campbell about signing new contracts and everything else. Pierre had gone to the World Cup and uh, he'd obviously, he had this ability to go through his agent to scholar, which I didn't like. I mean, having said that, I'm not saying that Irvin, uh, particularly, uh, he was a Pierre favourite as such. Um, and, and he was then wanting to bring Wim Jonk in from Holland and he was wanting all these Dutch boys in and um, I thought well yeah he's a player he's not the manager I'll decide on that particular role anyway I spent the summer I got Kevin Campbell I remember before I went off because I wanted I went later to go on holiday because I wanted to get everything else and leave the um, you know the coaching the first bit of the training physical to, to the, the fitness people to go so I could go. I, and I agreed with Scott and Kevin and I went to America and then halfway through Irving said, we've got a problem. Kevin hasn't signed the contract. I said, what do you mean he hasn't signed the contract? He said, well, he, he's, uh, there's a Turkish club that have come in. He's found that uh, what we've offered him gross, they're paying net. Uh, and I said, yeah, but hold on a minute. He was going to go in to sign the contract on the Monday. I said, I, I went away on the Friday. I said, I shook hands with Kevin on that and Scott. And, uh, and he said, well, uh, you know, there was this, that and the other. He said, so I said, well, so basically we come back that Irving still, even though Kevin had scored 23 goals, Irving still didn't fancy Campbell, you know, uh, uh, and he was listening to Rob Yance and we can get this player, we can get that, on the, and the French agent, we can this, it was all, you know, it was all names coming out of the, the woodwork, you know, and poor old Ian Story Moore, you know, it, it, had, had seen some of these once or twice, and Irving was trying to imply, yeah, we ought to sign. Well, Ian was saying, well, I haven't, I've only, I haven't seen enough to say that I'm going to recommend to Dave, and I knew some of these players myself, I didn't want to. Well, anyway, we, we, we come back and, and Kevin then told me the story, he went in to sign his contract on the Monday and he was told uh, that the contract wasn't ready. It, was, it hadn't been typed up yet, you know, but come in the next day. He went in the next day and said, look, we're sorry, this, that and the other. Well, it got the Thursday and he's getting the ump. Then he got through an agent back door, told him that uh, the, the, the Turkish club wanted him and they'd do this. So all of a sudden, Kevin's thinking, hold on a minute. 
instead of paying tax on what uh, I'm earning, I can have all this in my pocket. Now, if he'd have signed on the Monday or the Tuesday, it would have been out of the question. But he had a year to go, and could, uh, you know, Kevin was going to be unhappy. So all of a sudden, I've got a situation where Kevin Campbell's being sold, and I really ha I can't control it. So Pierre's now with Kevin gone. He's saying the club have got no ambition. I don't want to be. I was I was told we were going to spend players, and so it's kicked off. And then he's he's refused to come back. He's decided to go on strike. He's not coming back for pre-season training, uh, and so we've got a major problem. You know, fifty-three goals gone. Uh, you know, no no money. Uh, we needed we needed him back because basically. Um, even on the basis, if you come back, Kevin, uh, Pierre, we'll sell you. Because there was a few clubs at six million or seven that the Leeds were throwing money away at that particular time. I think we could have done a deal with him. But he wouldn't come back. And um, I, I, my response wasn't very good because, you know, I can't cope with that. Uh, or, you know, I think times have changed. But at that time, I'm thinking, hold on, you disrespect the club. You, you, you don't go on strike. You're a footballer. You know, you come back and you, you sit down and say, listen, I, I want to go and in a transfer request. And, and you make it quite plain. And we'll do the best to get rid of you. If we get seven million or six million, then I can do something. I can then go out and buy some strikers. But he wouldn't. Uh, and, and I responded a bit, you know, telling him, he, you know, then there was other things where the, the famous one where he come out and, the, you know, uh, a journalist has said, well, we understand Pierre said this, he's offering an olive branch. And I said, well, you know where he can stick his olive branch? Right up his uh, jacksie, you know. So uh, me and we were at war then, you know. I, I, in fairness, I, I should have handled it better. With Pierre being on strike, it, it affects the club. The club didn't feel right. The atmosphere wasn't right at all. Uh, 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 and really, it was somehow or other, through Scholar and myself, we should have got Pierre back quicker and sold. But when he come back, all of a sudden, they didn't want him, did they? Well, he wants a player who's been on strike for two months. All of a sudden, his value's gone down. Yeah, we could have got rid of him for three million, and I got overruled. I'd have got rid of him for three and a half million quick. But uh, I got overruled saying, no, he was, he was worth that. Of course, I was under pressure to bring him back because the, the club regarded him as an investment. But he was an investment that was fading quicker than the oil price. I knew in the middle of September I was on borrowed time. I was, I was locked into something that was not my fault. but. Uh, I thought perhaps if you could criticise that I should have perhaps gone and sorted Pierre out, but I put that up as a mistake. But I knew that it was only a matter of time, it was not if, it was when, because I knew it wasn't going to turn around. The spirit and the boys was being ed and everything else, and the results, and you just knew that things were going to be, and I was going to be a victim of, uh, of Van Oydel, really, because, you know, for me, uh, he, he disrespected Nottingham Forest, uh, it, what he did was disgraceful. What was your overriding emotion when you left the club? I was disappointed. Uh, I was disappointed because the Irving Scholar didn't come over to see me. He didn't summon me to Monaco. Uh, Phil saw, walked in and gave me a letter. I knew it was coming because I was. I went to see Arsenal v Preston. Um, we had Arsenal on the Saturday uh, in an FA Cup tie up at Preston, and a lot of the press boys were ringing me saying, "Harry, you've had it. You're gone." You know, which I, which I wasn't stupid enough. I knew it was there. I was with Mickey Adams coming back, so I knew. And I came in the next morning, and Phil saw, came in and gave me an official letter saying, "You know, this, that, and the other." And so I was disappointed. I'm thinking, well, none of the other directors. None of them had the bottle to actually call me to London. You know, they could have called me to London for a meeting, Scholar or Leslo or Ray or whatever it is, and say, look, you know, and commiserate even, you know, to, because uh, uh, they knew what the, the whole problem was. Um, so that was disappointing. That wasn't, that wasn't the way a, a great club should act. You know, you, you have to take it, whether you feel it's right or wrong. But uh, there, so I took the letter and thought, well, I'm going to go for a run. I went for a nice run down the Trent, round the canal and come back and uh, thought, cheerio. And um, then I got the players together uh, and uh, I banned at Van Oydel from the meeting. He wanted to know why he wasn't invited. I mean, Mick Kelly certainly left him in no uncertain terms to tell him why he wasn't invited. I thanked him for their efforts and it was 
time to move on. You say you enjoyed working at Forest. I think the fans, just to round this off, would be interested to hear just sort of, you know, what your feelings are on your, on your time there from the day Bassett of now. You know, what do you look back on with most fondness and your happiest memories? That sort of oh, I, I really, I mean, as I say, the, 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 the people at Forest behind the scenes were brilliant. We had so much fun there, Bobby out and Artie, the things we did, and that they were, they were fabulous people, as I said to you, a lot of the people who worked there, some are still there, some have gone. We had a real spirit behind, which is, you know, from there. Forget the directors, everything below that. I, I had fond memories of that there. There was uh, there were some, you know, fabulous days as well when we played well, you know. I mean, there's been, you know, a, a, on quite a few times that season where I, I drove back home to Sheffield you know, purring at the performance because there was there. I get called a long ball manager. I wish the Forest won the long ball side at all. We didn't have the players to play that, you know, so you get pigeoned. Oh, I can live with that. That's not, you know, such. But we played some fantastic football in, in some of those uh, games. You know, there was periods where, you know, some of the ability and the, the, what they did was a, was a pure joy to watch. But it summed up the club. Whatever we tried to do, we couldn't, it just wouldn't work for us. And, and it, but because of the atmosphere, it was totally different from the previous season. And it's only one bloke to, that's done that, is Van Oydel, really. Uh, it's a disgrace what he did.